Why does it feel like it's been years since I just stood in front of my games and yelled? <laughs> Oh my god, this is bringing me back. Remember when I used to just cover all of E3 with prediction videos and then live streams and then react to each of the events? Man, the energy I used to have when I was in my 20s. <laughs> I'm gonna mesh a bunch of things together in this video. We have a lot to talk about. I have been streaming the events over on Twitch. If you've caught any of them, you can still watch the entire reaction videos, but I wanna talk about them. I wanna make a video because a lot happened. And also a lot didn't happen. <laughs> We're gonna go through the kickoff to Summer Game Fest. We're gonna go through Ubisoft's event, Devolver Digital's event. We're talking brand new games, Nintendo Switch exclusives, Mario. <laughs> but before we get to any of that, there is an elephant in the room I need to address. And I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> it's been over a week since I made my last video. And things aren't looking good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know, because I don't think Bloomberg was lying, but it hasn't happened yet, and I think we are running out of time for Nintendo to announce a Switch Pro before E3. I really hope I didn't fall into a trap of getting excited for something that was fake, but it came from so many credible sources, and yet I'm standing here with egg on my face. The one thing I was hoping I wouldn't have on my face! Oh, that could be taken weirdly. So yeah, I don't know. Sorry for getting everyone so excited. We still have a few days until the Nintendo Direct, which I will be streaming live here on YouTube. So if you don't want to miss that, I don't know, hit the bell or something. I'm really excited. I want to see how many people. It might be my largest YouTube stream ever because Nintendo has something big planned. 40 minutes? of Nintendo Direct awesomeness during E3, and the way E3 has been going so far, Nintendo might have the best event if they even just show up and <laughs> reveal one good game. <laughs> no, that's not fair. Let me work through all the events, everything that's been happening so far. Just so you know, though, there's a lot happening right now with me on the internet, and I just want to catch you guys up, okay? My Twitch is twitch.tv forward slash beat-em-ups. I'm streaming all the events over there other than the nintendo direct which i'll stream here so go follow because we're live tomorrow with xbox next completely separate to all of this i'll also be live on youtube tomorrow night on the wooden eric channel hosting my podcast yes i have a podcast but this episode is going to be kind of special because if you follow me on twitter you might have seen that during the week i accidentally passed out and had a seizure in cvs i know a total shift change here and I want to talk about what happened because I think it's important to talk about what happened. It's also kind of a very embarrassing story but also a scary story and I just want to bring it to my podcast because I want to talk about what happened. So tomorrow night on the podcast I'm going to be talking about that. All right whatever let's go. Oh wait no sponsor time. <laughs> sponsor time and then we'll start talking about E3. Oh hi guys. Uh, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. It's all about exploring new skills and deepening existing passions. There's a class for anything and everything. Like, I have Skillshare open right now and I can see DSLR photography, learn Spanish, which I should probably do, how to take professional photos on your iPhone, how to cook, learning piano, video editing, illustration. I mean, damn it, if we started taking all of these classes, we would become unstoppable. Personally, I'm all about the video editing classes like Geordie's, as they help me develop new skills that I can then use in a video when I'm talking about those skills that I just learned. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 people to click my link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity. I think it's my link, actually. It's definitely my link. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's my link. I mean, you can have it. I'm just saying, I think it's mine. I'm pretty sure it's my link, it's my but uh, link. yeah, anyway, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Alright, so Summer Game Fest is part of E3 last year. It was created last year by Jeff Keighley in replacement for E3, and because E3 is back, they've just merged the two into one big digital event. So we actually got an extra day of E3 via the Summer Game Fest kickoff. Uh, it was 
fine. It was mostly a place where a lot of games could be shown that wouldn't get to be shown in the larger events. So the leavens that said there were a lot of great announcements including the biggest one and one of the biggest ones of the weekend elden ring but okay not an announcement but we finally saw elden ring now i gotta be honest and every time i say anything that's even slightly like i'm not super excited for it people think i'm being a debbie down and negative nancy but I'm not huge into Lord of the Rings, but they finally revealed it. And it, it looks like Lord of the Rings meshed with Dark Souls, but visually very impressive. I also am not a huge fan of Dark Souls. I know this is a terrible start to the video. I haven't been biting my fingernails like everyone else has for this game, but I'm really excited for everyone that finally got to saw it that have been waiting for it. Gearbox revealed a new game. It's a spin-off game with Tiny Tina. It looks like a Dungeons and Dragons action adventure game it's probably fun i mean borderlands is super fun the myth the man the legend kojima was there to reveal nothing really with a very confusing trailer with norman reedus getting into a box solid snake style i'm not really sure what the significance is here but i'll try the director's cut i actually really like death stranding i gotta be honest the initial kickoff day was pretty long it's like a couple hour event i think there wasn't much else to talk about. <laughs> we had things like Metal Slug is getting a tactic style game. Jeff Goldblum was there. I love him. Oh, I'm an idiot. And I forgot to mention that we actually finally saw some Monster Hunter 2 story cinematic trailer. This was like my favorite part of this event and I forgot to mention it. Hi everyone and welcome to Ubisoft Forward. To today, just mere hours ago, we had Ubisoft Forward and then Devolver Forwarder. Devolver is an indie company which have blown up because they've made some really great games in the past, like Enter the Gungeon, which I loved. In fact, if you go to their website and look at the games Devolver Digital has developed and published, most of them have ended up in my eShop videos because so many of them are that good. And they always put on a huge spectacle, whether it's some kind of skit or ridiculousness, you can expect crazy from them and we got it. I mean, the name of their event alone was a parody of Ubisoft Forward. But let's start with Ubisoft. Um, it was very slow. I know, I don't wanna be the negative Nancy Debbie Downer. Also, you gotta remember, we are coming out of COVID. I probably should have said that at the top of the hour. <laughs> Pretty much everything we're seeing through this E3 was developed, maintained, worked on, purely created during the COVID era through isolation. A lot of these games were remotely made and put together. So that in itself is really impressive, but it means that development was slow. It was stilted. While I am going to be honest and say, you know, it was slow. It was boring. There's a reason for it. And I'm not mad or upset. I'm just excited to get something. That said, it started with like 10 minutes of Rainbow Six, which isn't the Rainbow Six I'm used to seeing. There's aliens now. Then we had Rocksmith Plus. I I really like the Rocksmith games. This was actually a pretty cool announcement for me. I have tried to learn guitar multiple times using the Rocksmith games and I failed, but that was in no way the fault of Rocksmith, just me not playing enough or forgetting to play and then coming back later and having to relearn everything. All right, other than the obvious one we're all waiting to talk about, I think Riders Republic was the coolest game in this show. We've seen it announced before. We've even seen gameplay before, so it was nothing new, but the concept is still really exciting and I can't wait to dive in. A giant open world playground in nature where you can pick between bikes, gliders, parachutes, I, I, pff, snowboard things. I don't don't even know. And you're all just in there. Like 64 of you were just in there in this giant playground messing around. And then when you want, you can compete in races and game types and match modes. And it just looks like a blast. Then we had to kind of mumble through some stuff. There was a lot of talking. There was Just Dance, which I had to mute so that I didn't get DMCA copy strike claim deleted channel. Bye bye. Then we also had a Mythic Quest trailer for their TV show and then a Werewolves Within trailer for a movie, both of which I'm sure are fine, but I don't have time. Then we saw a cinematic trailer for Far Cry 6. No extra gameplay, which I thought was a little weird. I love the Far Cry games and honestly, I don't even need to see more gameplay. I know I'm going to enjoy it. Playing these games co-op is a ton of fun, really. The last Far Cry game, I swear I spent 40 hours alone just fishing in the game. The game's beautiful and had actually really fun fishing mechanics. I'm getting old and I might like fishing now, 
But that's beside the point. It's a great game. And they revealed something is happening with Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. That is a great game. And then finally, in a shocking twist that surprised no one because Nintendo themselves accidentally leaked it this morning. Everyone woke up to a new eShop listing for Mario and Rabbid sequel that Nintendo themselves accidentally made public too soon and then took it down. Kind of destroyed the hype or maybe it just made people more excited. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people were watching the event knowing they were going to see that to learn more about it. Maybe it's a tactic. I swear half the time these leaks are just extra promotion. Beside the point, here it was. Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Kim's going to be really excited for this. She hasn't seen it yet. We both loved the original game. In fact, I adored it. I am a huge fan of these kind of games. And I thought the animation and the story and the gameplay of the first Mario and Rabbids was incredible. But it was always on sale for like $5. So I thought it didn't sell very well. Apparently, it sold really well and they've made a sequel. Once again, the animation is on point. The humor is there. They very cleverly have taken the story and the franchise into space, into the galaxy. So in a weird way, it parodies the actual evolution of Mario. You had the original Mushroom Kingdom Mario and then on the Wii, he went into space for Mario Galaxy, and now they're doing the same thing. They've gone from Kingdom Battle into a galaxy sci-fi. I think it's a really smart move, and because of that, we get Rabid Rosalina and a Rabid Star thing. I'm really excited. They've also evolved the gameplay. They didn't really show us much, and what we did see was pre-alpha, so I think it'll be a while before we'll see this game released, maybe late, late next year. But I didn't see a grid pattern at all. It looked like you actually had free motion within a set area, so... I kind of hope they don't change the gameplay too much, but I trust that they're not going to mess it up. Oh, wait, sorry. I was going to move on, but they ended with an Avatar game, and ah, uh, I don't like Avatar. I don't, but that was Ubisoft. Not super exciting, a lot of talking, pretty drawn out, couple of cool announcements. I feel like Ubisoft has very recently for lack of a better term, blown their load on a bunch of games and franchises. They just put out Watch Dogs, a new Assassin's Creed, Immortals Phoenix Rising. That said, there were a ton of things I was really hoping to see. First and foremost, Skull and Bones. If you've been following me for a while and watching my E3 reactions for the last like seven years, I'm actually really excited for that game and it's still nowhere to be seen. Unbelievable. Also, Good and Evil, which was announced a long time ago, could have been the forefront most exciting thing of this event if we finally got to see the game, which, but nowhere to be seen, even a new Rayman game. I don't know, I was hoping for one big new awesome announcement. And I guess that was Mario and Rabbids and it was a Switch exclusive, so I'm just gonna shut up and take it. <laughs> well, let's check a look. Then, Devolver Digital, or should I say Devolver Forwarder. Once again, their entire event was a massive troll, but it was hilarious. Whether you like the games in this event or not, and bear in mind they're indie games, which I love. I actually, this event has some of the funnest and best looking games that I've seen so far for the entire weekend. But however you feel about the games, this is how you make an entertaining event. The entire thing was a movie, essentially, with practical effects. And there was this one scene where she was like walking and talking and everything was like exploding behind her and they got it in one take and it looked incredible. The overarching theme was that Devolver Digital are releasing a subscription service for their games called Premium Perp Pass or something or Devolver Digital Max Pass. It's fake. It wasn't real. My chat and I were going back and forth the whole time with, is this actually real? Because they spent most of their event promoting this thing that ended up being fake. Premium purchase. I don't know about that one. See, now I don't know what's real and what's not. I can see that being real. It was really hard to tell what was real and what wasn't. There was an entire game that they're working with Special Reserve Games to make a physical release of it, and they won't sell it digitally. I thought that was a lie, but I think that one's actually true. My biggest takeaway, though, was how much of a screw you this event seemed to Ubisoft specifically. Like, obviously, it was a big joke on subscription services in general, and that really goes for everything nowadays. But they had just followed Ubisoft, which has the UB Play or whatever it is, the subscription service. They called their event Devolver Forwarder, parodying them, and then they make this big parody of subscription services and how money hungry it is. I mean, it's brilliant, but oh, oh, when you're in the industry and you're mocking one of the big guys, that takes 
big balls. But yeah, some of the games they showed, Trek to Yomi, beautiful looking game crazy visuals considering it's all side scroller inscription which was like a card battling kind of game initially but then it went all weird and creepy and haywire and i'm really intrigued in that one wizard with a gun also looks really good a cooperative sandbox survival game another weird trailer that's really funny. I recommend watching the trailer for Tumble Time. I thought it was a fake mobile game making fun of mobile games, but I think it's an actual mobile. I, I can't tell, but the trailer was really funny. Demon Throttle looked really good. Death's Door looked amazing. Both the gameplay, the fast paced action and the visuals. Both those games looked a little bastion-y to me and I loved them both. Phantom Abyss, I'm not too sure about. Looks like a endless runner. Indiana Jones dungeon cooperative multiplayer kind of game, but Shadow Warrior kicked off the show and I, I, I don't know if I was watching Doom or whatever this was, but it looks amazing. In a weird way, even crazier, even more high action with weird things going on, like grabbing monster parts and throwing them at other monsters. I don't even, I don't even know. I'd have to rewatch the trailer, but it just looked good. <sighs> and that's everything I've seen. And then Gearbox followed, I'm just, going to Google and see Godfall coming to PlayStation 4. I didn't like that game very much. It was kind of boring. <laughs> I think I reviewed it. Homeworld 3 is in production. A tiny update on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which we already talked about. Behind the scenes for the Borderlands movie. That's it. I don't think we have to react to that. <laughs> Xbox is tomorrow. Again, I am streaming it. I have a really good feeling that Xbox's event might steal the entire show. I think it's gonna come down to Xbox and Nintendo. Nintendo could easily knock this out of the park, but then so could Xbox. But then again, both of those companies are kings of falling flat when the pressure is on. <laughs> and I want to say, we already talked about this on my podcast, if you missed it, but RGT actually came on after we prank called him and told us that GameStop has doubled their staff for the 15th and 16th in expectation of big things happening from both Xbox and Nintendo. Nothing big has happened yet. Nothing big enough to get people to rush out and go to GameStop so ferociously that they need to be double staffed. There is nothing yet. And we only have Xbox and Nintendo left. And I'm gonna stream them both because I think it's going to be insane. Okay, that's my first E3 reaction video of the year. It's so good to be doing them again. It's literally been two years. I hope you had a good time. Like it, subscribe, leave a comment down below with your favorite things so far and I'll see you probably tomorrow night with my Xbox reaction. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow night. Oh, also on the on the podcast tomorrow night. Okay, bye.